Okay, so you're gonna set up today a cross between two parental strains. This is gonna set off an experiment that's gonna take us at least a month uh, just to get through, or four weeks to get through to the offspring that we're really interested in. Uh, you're gonna start with different eye color phenotypes with flies of known genes, and uh, you're gonna sort of work with other people in the class and generate uh, offspring that you can compare with others and try to get at some uh, genetic answers. We're gonna build up as we go, build up our expectation and our understanding about what's going on. So just um, as you get started, you're going to have, for your specific cross, you're going to have a male, a uh, set of male flies of one phenotype, one genotype, and a set of female fly parents that are unmated of a different genotype. And that'll be your parental or P generation. That's what you're gonna set up today. So parental generation, uh, at the end of two weeks, we should have the F1 offspring from that cross. And at that point, we will cross the F1 males by the F1 females to get yeah, two weeks after that, F2 individuals. So uh, this is similar to what we worked out in the class, uh, in the lecture class with following genes through a couple of generations of cross, following two genes at a time. So it should be a little familiar. And of course, that's the, the goal here is to reinforce what you've learned in the lecture. So uh, as we go, we wanna think about the uh, connection between genotypes and phenotypes, whether you have dominant or recessive uh, phenotypes caused by your alleles, alleles that are dominant or recessive, uh, depending on which phenotype they give you, I should say, uh, we'll be able to predict our F1 generation offspring, be able to predict the F2 generation offspring. So we'll go through some examples here. Let's say your uh, eye colors are pink and auburn. You want to keep track of the abbreviations there. So pink P, auburn is AU. And then remember that you've got your uh, mutant alleles, which will be as they're written. And then the wild type alleles for each of these are the same abbreviation with a plus. So as we go through, we'll get your uh, genotypes for the parents. So as I mentioned here, the genotypes for the parents, this is a sticking point for people sometimes. Uh, the fly that has pink eyes is homozygous for the mutant pink allele little p, little p. But the fly that has pink eyes also has a gene for auburn eyes. So there's a gene there, whether it's mutated or not. So the fly that has pink eyes has a mutated version of the pink gene and a wild type version of the auburn gene. Uh, that's sort of the expectation if you have any mutant, the, what they call the genetic background should be wild type for everything else. So assume wild type for everything else except for the mutant that we're focusing on. Uh, so pink-eyed mutant has wild type for the auburn gene and uh, conversely the auburn mutant should have a wild type allele homozygous for the pink gene. So keep that in mind. These would be the genotypes for those parents. So just like I said, the pink-eyed parent uh, is homozygous for the P allele, but also homozygous for the AU plus allele. And then the Auburn individual is homozygous for the AU allele and homozygous for the P plus allele. Uh, you wanna choose, I guess, whichever one of these you wanna make first. So I've chosen to do P first and AU second, and that allows me, as I write these genotypes, I can compare them a little bit better. So if we have these as our parent genotypes, a pink-eyed parent and an auburn-eyed parent, what are the kinds of gametes they can make? Well, they're homozygous for both genes. So the pink-eyed parent is gonna contribute a little P to the gamete and an AU plus to the gamete. The auburn-eyed parent is going to contribute a P plus to the gamete and an AU to the gamete. So it turns out with true breeding or homozygous individuals, there's only one kind of gamete that these parents can make. So that's handy. So your cross for the parental generation should have a pretty easy prediction for the F1 offspring. So if we mix these together, uh, I don't have it written in here, but if you do uh, the P's together, you've got heterozygous P plus P, 
And for Auburn, heterozygous AU plus AU would be the single genotype for the offspring. And uh, what would be the phenotype? So I guess that's maybe not as clear as I think it should be. Um, so the phenotype, if you're looking at two different eye colors, basically for each gene, if you have at least one plus, that sort of cancels out that phenotype. So the uh, phenotype for the P gene, the genotype is P plus slash P. So there's at least one P plus. That means that they're not pink eyes. Right? Uh, the Auburn gene is AU plus slash AU. There's at least one AU plus. That means not Auburn. So if the fly is not pink eyed and not Auburn eyed, then it sort of defaults back to wild type. So those plus alleles uh, are dominant and they give the wild type eye colors at the pink gene and at the auburn gene. All right, so these would be our uh, F1 individuals, as I mentioned, now spelled out P plus P, AU plus AU. F1 by F1 is crossing two of the same kind. And now we have a whole bunch of different kinds of gametes. Uh, if you want, you can pause the video and try to figure this out for yourself. How many kinds of gametes? can each of these parents make? So it's every combination of P, two kinds of P, and every combination of those with AU, two kinds of AU. So here's an example of a gamete square. Uh, not a Punnett square here, but this is the square that would help you determine what are the four kinds of gametes. So P plus with AU plus, P plus with AU, P with AU plus, P with AU. Four kinds of gametes, equally likely. And then those become the uh, top row and the left side of your Punnett square. And combining all these together gets you 16 possible genotypes for your outcomes. You'd be able to figure out the numbers of each genotype, uh, the frequencies of each genotype, and also the frequencies of each uh, phenotype. So crossing the F1 generation, this would give you your offspring here would be the F2 offspring. So I also haven't filled this one in. Um, will you be, be able to calculate out the frequencies that you expect for the offspring from this? Okay, so um, those of you who are physically setting up a cross here, these are the genes that we have to work with. And uh, if you're choosing pairs of genes to work with, I've got the column here called avoid. These are genes that don't work well together because they are located on the same chromosome. Uh, that's a problem that we're, we're not equipped to, to explore. It would really mess up your numbers and your expectations. So uh, don't cross brown with cinnabar, sepia with scarlet, or vermilion with any of the white mutants. So uh, if you're in the room, we're going to set up predictions for what's going to happen. And if you're doing this remotely, you should be setting up your predictions on your own for um, either a hypothetical cross or maybe I'll assign you some kind of cross that you can do for your, um, your personal cross. <laughs>